Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence of me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona, with Sierra working all the goodies. Oh, we got a lot of stuff going on. Oh, this week, I got to make sure I mention this. We have Atlas Shrugged is coming this weekend, this Friday, is premiering, and it's going to be here in Tempe, Arizona, at the Harkins Theater, Valley Art Theater, which is by Arizona State University. So what we're doing is the, the movie studio sent me some original posters, you know, big posters. They're probably, I don't know, two feet by three feet or something, these big posters. As who is John Galt, and then of course Atlas Shrugged, uh, you know the movie Part One posters. Well, we're going to be giving those out as prizes for the best. You know, the, the you can go put up a who is John Galt sign somewhere. You make it to where everybody can see it. You do. I give you original movie poster. So we'll be posting that tonight, early tomorrow morning, and encouraging a lot of the activists to go out and do that here. And you got you you send me a JPEG, you send me a photograph, we put up on Freedom's Phoenix where you did a nice who is John Galt thing without damaging property, thank you. Now you put that up there, you know, you get it, an original poster, which will be worth some money someday. Or it certainly has sentimental value, I am sure. And I got uh, several. I probably have a dozen, six of each kind. So go ahead and and you'll start thinking about where you're gonna put who is John Galt here in the valley. And I'm you know, I'm all over it, man. You get a poster. So well, we'll have something on Freedom's Phoenix about that. I want to go over some of the other uh, news here, but it, it, I just wanted to finish up with the show low that you you have up in northeastern Arizona. A lot of people are getting out of the city, and the people that do this are generally people that can. You know, they they have retirements. They got uh, uh, a little bit of cash saved up, some money. They go buy a home up there. They get away from the government. They want a little bit of government. They come in and say, you know, we need to pave this road. We need, you know, and then it starts all over again. I mean, that's what you're you're witnessing up there. We went up to see and talk to people and take a look at and so on. If you're in any kind of a community— What's going to happen is there are going to be a group of people. They'll go there for the same reasons to get away from whatever. Like, you know, we got an invasion in Arizona and the Prescott and Flagstaff and a lot of places from California. But they bring their mentality with them. They try and bring their culture. They go, yeah, but you need to have and you don't got and we need just a little bit of a tax. And then, of course, you know, the scum of the people that were doing it before as politicians make their way over and start all over again. Here we go. So I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, that may not be the answer. I mean, if you're really going to be, you want to be left alone, you need to go off on Lone Prairie by your lonesome. Well, that's kind of what, you know, this trip confirmed for us. We kind of had that idea anyway. It's you need to get off. Well, fortunately, technology is getting to the point to where, man, you know, we get a little bit of energy thing going on. We're autonomous from a grid. Toodaloo. Toodles me boodles, man. I am off on the Lone Prairie, and I just have, you know who my neighbors are? Where the heck I want them to be. So this is kind of where we're thinking, you know, as we're preparing for the year. And I and Karen really wanted me to go up there and see what was up there. And it's very beautiful, especially after it, it snowed, you know. So it was it was really nice. I I really like to visit. We always like going up there in the summer anyway because it's nice. But I I can see where this is going. There isn't going to be a small community that doesn't have the man with his thumb on you. In fact, in smaller communities, oftentimes it's worse. And that was confirmed. FYI. Now, I want to talk about, you know, Iceland. <clears throat> now, Iceland, little Iceland panics the big banks. And let me tell you why. This is what's going on. Now, this is from Daily Bell, dailybell.ch. Now, Daily Bell is a libertarian-oriented English site that's in Europe. And you'll see some of the stuff that we have and there. You know, Ron Paul will post on there sometimes and different people and people we know. But it's uh, it's really more for the expatriates, expatriates that have gone to Europe and kind of what's going on here. Maybe a little bit of protection. Iceland says no. Now, this is them quoting the Wall Street Journal. Iceland says no. The island nation may serve as an example for those who want capitalists to operate at their own risk. 
In a national referendum Saturday, Icelanders for the second time voted against a government proposal to pay the biggest the big losses of some of their bankers and their foreign customers, with 60% voting no and 40% in favor. I'm amazed you even have 40%. I don't even know who they were. For those of us who welcome capitalists but want them to operate their own risk, this hopefully sets an example for the rest of Europe. Huh. Right. Now, I'm going <clears> to <throat> read a little bit of the, the history on how this happened, okay? How Iceland... How Icelandic taxpayers got stuck with this bailout bill is a strange saga. When the international financial crisis hit bottom in the fall of 2008, it became clear that the Icelandic insurance fund for depositors could not cover all of the liabilities of the foreign branches of the private Icelandic bank Landesbanki. In order to avoid a general run on their own banks, the British and the Dutch governments decided to reimburse depositors for not only the principal, but also the interest due in Lansanke, how do you say it? Lansbanke branches in their countries up to a certain level. These two governments then presented the bill to the Icelandic government, $3.5 billion, for the tiny Nordic nation of 320000 This was an enormous sum, amounting to half of its annual GDP. It would be the equivalent of $700 billion, no, £700 billion pounds claim on the British government. The Icelandic government protested that it was not responsible for deposits in private banks. It had fully complied with European law in, settling, in setting up the Icelandic Insurance Fund for depositors, financed by a levy on the banks. If the fund could not meet its obligations, it was a problem for those who, at their own risk and for a quick profit, had entrusted their money to the Lands Banking. But other threats from the British and Dutch governments supported by the European Union and the International Monetary Fund, at the end of 2009, Iceland reluctantly signed a treaty according to which it had to pay the total sum with stiff interest rates to the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. The import of the above unfairness is powerful for those who believe, as we do, that the 21st century is marked by a clash between the truth-telling of the Internet and the dominant social themes, the fear-based promotions of the Anglo-American elite that seeks a one-world order. The power elite, which has been attempting to create global government for nearly a century now, or perhaps longer, needs to project a certain inevitability. Iceland's two rejections of attempts to force its citizens to pay for the financial mistakes of others must be causing nausea in the city of London and upending the sense of inevitability that is so important to the wretched, bully, wretched bullying that has become the trademark signature of the European Union. You know it's becoming an issue of utmost international import when Iceland's own central bankers start to squeal. Here's what... People's Daily, China, reported just yesterday in an article entitled Icelandic Central Bank Official Wants Into Ice Save Issue. And surely they do. An Icelandic Central Bank official said Saturday Iceland should get over the ice save issue as soon as possible to create favorable conditions for a return to growth. Now, what this means is, you know, the people, they said, you know, they did away with their government. You know, they signed some did deal. What? Yeah, you're done. We're starting over. Remember? Now they're trying to get them indebted again. Twice they voted it down. Can they allow this to stand? It's just an exact 320,000 people. But they're setting a trend for the rest of the planet. Oh, can't have that.